Hey everyone, welcome back to Engineering Education. For this next problem, we have a graphical convolution problem. And here we have two signals, X of T, which is the input signal, and H of T, which is the response signal. And X of T has this triangular shape that ranges from 0 to 2, and H of T is this square that ranges from 0 to 1. And the problem is asking us to find the convolution of these two time variant signals for t in between 0 and 1. So, as always, pause the video, give it a shot, and we'll go over the answer in a bit. So, to solve this, we go to the FE Handbook, as always, and here there is a convolution section with continuous time convolutions and discrete time convolutions. And so we're dealing with continuous signals, so we're going to use the convolution integrals. And here they have that v of t is equal to x of t convolved with y of t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to plus infinity of x of tau y of t minus tau d tau. So this is actually non-standard notation, so we're going to replace v of t with y of t and the y of t with h of t. And we're going to write that on the next page. So y of t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to plus infinity of x of tau h of t minus tau d tau. And so this also can be rewritten as the integral from negative infinity to plus infinity of h of tau x of t minus tau. Now this isn't in the handbook but these two integrals are equivalent. And the beauty of this is that we are going to be performing operations where we are going to be flipping and we are going to be shifting. And so we are given the choice to which signal we are going to flip and then shift. So that's actually pretty convenient. We can always choose the easier signal to work with. So the first step is going to be to replace every t with tau. So all of these t's here we're just going to replace by the dummy variable tau. And so now we want to choose the signal that is easiest to work with. So the signal that we are going to flip and then shift. And we have two choices either x of tau or h of tau and it turns out that h of tau is going to be easier to work with. It's easier to flip a square and shift a square than it is to flip a triangle and shift a triangle. So what we're going to do is we are going to redraw h of tau and we're going to flip it across the vertical axis. So we're going to do h of minus tau. And essentially what we're doing is we're going to be working with the first integral where Ultimately, we want to find what h of t minus tau is. And so if t is equal to 0, then h of t minus tau is going to be h of minus tau. So this is tau. And h of minus tau is going to be this flipped over the vertical axis. And so we get something like that. So now we want to take that and we want to shift it either to the left or to the right. And whether we shift to the left or to the right depends on the sine of t. And so if we want to shift to the right, then that will correspond to a negative t. And if we want to shift to the left, that is a positive t. So we want to shift our signal towards x of tau while still maintaining inside our borders of t has to be between 0 and 1. So we're going to redraw that here. And we're going to draw both signals on the same plot. So we had our... Oh, that didn't come out too good. We had our triangle which was from 0 to 2. 
at a height of 1. And now we have our h of minus tau that we're going to shift. And we're going to shift it towards x of tau. But we can't shift it more than one unit because then it'll violate our boundaries here. So we're going to shift it, let's say, up to here. So all we did was take h of minus tau and we shifted it over to the right t times by t units, rather. And so that's t, and this is going to be t minus 1. And so this is h of t minus tau. This is x of tau. And now we want to multiply these together in their regions of overlap. So they actually overlap here. So they go from 0 to t. So then our y of t integral can then be rewritten as the integral from 0 to t, x of tau, h of t minus tau d tau. And so what is h of t minus tau within that region 0 to t? So between 0 and t, h of t minus tau is equal to 1. So this then is written as x of tau d tau. But what is x of tau? So x of tau within the region 0 to t is linear. And so that's your regular y equals mx plus b. Though in this case, instead of y equals mx plus b, it's going to be x of tau equals m tau plus b, where b is 0. That's your, your intercept. Your slope is going to be 1, and so this is just tau. And so we can rewrite our integral to go from 0 to t. x of tau is just tau d tau. And now we can evaluate this integral pretty easily. And we get t squared over 2 when we evaluate it. And that is our answer. So to recap what we just did, the first step was to replace all t's with tau's. Remember, tau is just a dummy variable and it doesn't really change anything. And then we looked at both of these signals here, x of tau and h of tau, and we determined which signal was easier to work with. Which one would we rather flip and shift? And so we determined that the square signal is going to be easier to work with than the triangle signal. So our square signal is h of tau, and so what we wanted to do was to find out what h of t minus tau was and what it looked like within the boundaries that we were given. And so we first set t is equal to 0 and just flipped h of tau across the vertical axis and then shifted it either left or right. In our case, we shifted to the right because it was in the direction of x tau and towards our boundaries. So because t had to fall between 0 and 1, we had to shift our signal to the right. And when we shifted to the right, we found that h of t minus tau overlapped with x of tau. And we found that region of overlap, and that was our integration boundary. And keep in mind that we shifted t units, but the shift was an arbitrary shift to the right. We could have shifted, let me write this in another color, I guess we can use that. We could have shifted, let's say, all the way up to here and integrated that and we would still have gotten the same answer. If we exceeded the boundary past one 
then we would not have gotten the right answer because we have, would have gone past our boundaries. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more graphical convolution problems, please let me know in the comments below. If there's anything that wasn't clear or anything you still need a little help understanding, please let me know and we can do a follow-up video or continue with these examples. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, enjoy engineering.